Welcome you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness. This case, this lawsuit, this lawsuit that Rodney Jones filed is mind-blowing. You hear me? Mind-blowing. It's so much. Too much to take in. So I would rather just you know, go through some things with you all because it's just too much to take in. Too much to... Yeah, so let's, let's get to it. So, United States Federal Court, Southern District of New York, Rodney Jones is the plaintiff versus, you see, Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia have... To Marion, Lucian, Charles Grinch, Christina, Corin, Shelley's Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Doe's 1 to 10. Wow, that's, yeah, that's a lot of John and Jane Doe's, at least 10 of them. Gee. And ABC Corporations, 1 to 10. Wow. Okay. So, there's a trigger warning right here. This document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of sexual intercourse, redacted images of minors, jeez, sex workers, prostitutes, details of sex trafficking, and the illegal distribution of guns and drugs. Wow. I mention a lot of these things. Um... On my other videos about Pup, Diddy, and I didn't even read the document, uh, this document, <laughs> yeah, until now. Okay, so, Plaintiff Rodney Little Rod Jones, Mr. Jones, hereby alleges, as in his for his complaint against defendant Sean Combs, Mr. Combs, defendant Justin Dior Combs, Jay Combs, defendant Lucian Charles Grange, Mr. Grange. Defendant Ethiopia Hector Mariam, Miss Hector Mariam, hopefully that's her name. Defendant Christina Horham, Horham. Defendant Shalice Recording Studios, CRS. Defendant Love Records, LR. Defendant Motown Records, MR. Defendant Universal Music Group, UMG. Defendant Combs Global Enterprises, CGE. John and Jane Doe's 1 to 10, ABC Corporations 1 to 10 as follows. Okay, I don't know if I want to read all this. Uh, so they file, wait. Yeah, I don't know if this, these are, I'm going to just scan through. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Brother Early, Brother Love, or Love. Jeez. Okay. Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 1990s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. Okay, we don't need to... Wait, did he put his address too? Yeah, Mr. Combs resides at... Wow. Okay. Look at this. Whoa. Oops, 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 oops. Look at this. 
Oh, wow. So, yeah. The son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton J. Combs was born on December 30th, 1993. Okay. Wow. These are... The people he's also suing, Lucian Charles Grange. Wow, this is the CEO of uh, Motown Records. Okay. This is Ethiopia after Marian. This is Christina Coram. This is the one he accused of being just like Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell. She's, he said she's, she's the Ghislaine Maxwell to, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell, the one, you know, with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, she's like that to Puffy. This one right here is, yeah, that's what he said in the, I read while I was, um, while I was, uh, scrolling but yeah we'll get there okay these are the companies okay the labels all right so from the Wendy city he's from Chi-Town, chicago illinois okay playing drums in the church okay this is him. All right. Okay. Summary of events from September 2022 to November 2023. Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months. At a time, spending holidays, holidays, sorry, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video, audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms, the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Whoa. This is serious. Mr. Combs providing laced alcohol beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S., Virgin Islands, and Florida. Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corham KK, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consum consumption. Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman? What? Whoa. Whoa. Christian Combs is his son. 
wow, not even just well, Justin is being sued too, but Christian Combs is doing things like this. Whoa, Mr. Combs detailing how he plans to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Kathy Ventura's lawsuit. Wow, young Miami's cousin and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones. Actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones. Jeez. Rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht censoring, cen no, consorting, sorry, with underage girls, sex workers, and R&B singer redacted and Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Now, when you scroll down, you're going to see the rapper. He's going to give clues who the rapper is. And it is Mick Mills. Okay? Allegedly. Um, and the R&B singer is Usher. When I scroll down, you will see the clues. It's crazy. Am I shocked? No, I'm not. All of these people are sickles. Okay, let's move on. Charlie's recording studios shooting. On or oh, about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writer's and producer's camp at Charlie's recording Studio at 845 Island Avenue. Mm -hmm. Present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30 year old tall African American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer what um has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, J. Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so here's the clue to, to who the people are. That's not named. That's redacted. This right, so the one, first one is, this writer spoke with several employees of the yacht rented my, well, I guess it says, it should say my, by. It says my. Okay, rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands, who personally witnessed defendant Coram instruct her staff, Brandon Paul, Frankie Sandella, and Moy Bourne spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Number two, the, uh, the second person, a complaint is forthcoming. Third, he is a rapper, a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Now we know the person who dated Nicki Minaj from Philadelphia is Mick Mills. Are you surprised? Didn't we see Mick Mills in the in the pool with Diddy and Diddy's calling him Daddy? And Mick Mills is bent over, kind of like over the the edge of the pool, and and then Puffy's like. Oh, I wish I could play the clip right now. I don't have it ready. Um, I don't have it <laughs> ready. Um, yeah, Mc, um, Mick Mills. Puffy's like, yeah, you earned it, daddy. Or <laughs> something like that. Crazy, right? Yeah, so, um, and we saw him on, we saw Mick Mills on Yacht with, you know, billionaires. <laughs> you know, white billionaires and everything. And there's so many, so many things. Okay, so the fourth person, he is a Grammy Award winning R&B singer 
who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. Whoa. Who is this one? There was another one I saw that it was Usher. Oh, yeah, that is Usher. Oops, okay, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Mr. And Jay Combs exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg, hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon, upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's gunshot wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area near his leg, hip. He decided to lift G and place him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Wow. Mr. Combs gave, gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Assailant? Yes, yeah, sorry. Wow. So see, this is the articles that, you know, that, that came out. I guess that night, you know, so there were articles written about the incident. You see? Wow. Mr. Jones several Mr. Jones has several corroborating witnesses who spoke with this writer anonymously due to fear of retaliation from Mr. Combs. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. Wow. Mr. Jones has the clothing he wore that day and believes it may still have the stains and DNA of G's blood. Whew. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or J. Combs. So it's either Puffy shot him or Justin Combs. Puffy son shot him. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, look at the proof. Wow. Clearly, G was not shot outside of the studio as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report to law enforcement. Mr. Combs and defendant LR, MR, UMG, and CRS provided private security for the writers, camp as defendant CRS. The security was porous, 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 and lackluster at best. The fact that either Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were allowed to enter CRS with guns, and those guns were not confiscate, confiscated by security, right, is a clear breach of duty by Mr. Combs. Defendants LR, MR, and UMG to protect Mr. Jones and the other attendees of this writer's camp. As a result of this shooting, Mr. Jones is severely traumatized. Mr. Jones now suffers from PTSD, so severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Oh, 
Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Jones was sexually harassed and assaulted by Mr. Combs. Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and author unauthorized groping, touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. Those events took place in LA, New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around naked and showed in a clear glass enclosure. As a heterosexual Christian man, Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances and expressed his discomfort to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Horham, Horham KK. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know Sean will be Sean. KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs' groping of Mr. Jones' anus and genitals as friendly horseplay. What? Stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you, Mr. Jones. Despite these assurances, on several occasions, when Mr. Combs began to understand and walk around his house naked, KK would say, Okay, I am leaving now, and she would disappear. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best or enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abetted Mr. Combs' sexual assault of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him and took accept into accepting a homosexual relationship. Duty sexual defiant div, 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 wait, how you pronounce this? I know the word with div, deviant sorry. Oh my goodness. Through these sexually deviant acts, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging in such nefarious activity. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. Yeah, I believe that this guy is just too far gone. This guy, Puffy Diddy, is, yeah. Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones and to engage in engaged sex. Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized Music producer Stevie Aaron Jordan, Stevie J. Stevie J is an American DJ, record producer, and television personality. Stevie J was part of the Bad Boy Records production team, The Hitman. In 1997, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. Throughout the late 1990s, Stevie J produced for several artists, including Mariah Carey, Tevin Campbell, that's why it's B.I.G. 112, okay, whatever. Stevie J was one of the producers of the, on the Love album. Okay. Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Mr. Combs went so far as to share a video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones' anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Oh, I agree. I agree with this, but he's not lying about this. This is a normal practice in the music industry, you know. Oh, yeah. He's not lying about this. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper 
Number five, remember? Number five was the Philadelphia rapper who dated uh dated Miss uh, uh uh Nicki Minaj. Yeah, that's Meek Mill, right? Redacted, R&B singer, redacted. Yes, Usher, that's the one, and Stevie J. Okay. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. This is sick. The following are screenshots of the video of Stevie J anally penetrating a Caucasian male that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. Wow. That does look like Stevie J too. Oh yeah, here was the clue. Sorry, here was the, this. This is the clue. So the ones earlier, yeah, yeah, same. It is the same, same clues. Okay, yeah, Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Yeah, okay. Um. Oh yeah, he performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Yeah, this is Usher. The one at the top, the first time, R&B singer. Mm, that could be. Anyways, let's keep going. I, that could be. We'll get back to that, okay? Um. Oh wow. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. So this writer's name is has been redacted. We don't know that one. But, yeah, those two we know. Those two clues, we know who they are. Wow. Yeah, that does look like Stevie J. Look at the nose. Wow, look at this. They blocked this. We can't see the the penetration. Okay, yeah, because we don't need to see that. Thanksgiving 2022, Mr. Jones is sexually assaulted by young Miami's cousin. On Thanksgiving Day 2022, Mr. Jones was in Mr. Combs' house, located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins, cousins, so there were more than one, were also present. Mr. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the, to the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her in there to sexually assault Mr. Jones. As she entered the bathroom, she dropped to her knees and began performing oral on Mr. Jones' exposed penis. Mr. Jones pushed her away and ex exited the bathroom. Young Miami's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones' rejection as she proceeded to follow Mr. Jones out of the bathroom. She started undressing and attempted to straddle him and have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. Wow. That's the Miami's cousins. The fact that they that they part of it, they yeah, so that tells you young Miami, like I said in my other video. Yeah, she's down with that. She's down with that. That is sick. Once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off. The following are images from a video of Young Miami, her cousin, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Combs. Oh, wow. This is them. This is him and Diddy. And here goes young my here goes young Miami and the cousin that did that. And there are other people there too. Wow. Okay. Okay. Trafficking and Victims Protection Act. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York, Florida. In the United States Virgin Islands. During this time, Mr. Jones was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to the pleasure of Mr. Combs. On or about February 4, 
2023, Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring prostitutes and sex workers back to his home in Miami, Florida. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. So someone has the, the proof, the video. Wow. Okay. The sex workers that Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to bring back to his home. This is the picture. On or about February 2nd, 2023 incident, Mr. Jones believed Mr. Combs drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs. Whoa. So all three, so wait, four. Two sex workers and Mr. Combs. Plus him, so it's, that's like a orgy. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. Okay. This is this is the picture. Sex workers in Mr. Jones' bed the morning after being drugged. On another occasion in Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night of 2022, Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones and DeForest Taylor to enter the studio bathroom. He asked them for a $100 bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a $100 bill. So Mr. Combs waited a little later to do coke with young Miami. She's also a cokehead. You see? You have to be down with these people for them to want you around. For them to be involved with you. You can't stay clean and proper while these devils... No, you you, you come into their playground. So you, you have to be like them. So yeah, she's as disgusting as he is. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the river located at I'm sorry about Miami da, da, da. Mr. Jones did so and Mr. Combs forced him to engage in unsolicited sex acts did I say that word right? unsolicited anyway, sex acts with these workers So here goes the here goes the booby trap on the river. As part of Mr. Jones' sex worker recruitment tools, Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to booby trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker. He approached that Mr. Combs was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. So he had to wear the baseball cap, this bad boy, this exclusive bad boy baseball cap. And he would go there to the booby trap. That's a signal for the sex workers. They would, so when they see Mr. Jones with the bad boy baseball cap on, they know that that's their signal, you know, they all know that Diddy is in town and needs them to come through, come over. Wow. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit Booby Trap on the river. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap on the river. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones and to solicit, solicit, soliciting, I don't know why this word is bothering me, sex workers from booby trap on the river. As detailed below, Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. Apparently, these workers were accustomed to ser servicing Mr. Combs and would know that he is in town. 
by the sight of the bad boys baseball cap. The following are uh, Instagram profiles of two of the sex workers that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and have sex with at his home in Miami, Florida. I wonder if those are real women. You know, I don't know if they're real women or not. You never know with, you know, Diddy. But yeah, these are the sex workers' Instagram pro- profiles. Oh my goodness. Okay. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit or have sex with individuals. Oh, with the individuals in the previous paragraph, Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting. Yay, I got it right this time. <laughs> and sleeping with these women. The following is the phone number of another sex worker that Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to solicit and perform sex acts with at his home in Miami, Florida. So you see, it says blank booby trap Miami. Wow. Mr. Jones had no desire to solicit or have sex with the individual in the previous paragraph. I think I said this already. Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for the Love Album. He offered him $250,000 to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He promised him ownership of his $20 million property. Uh, one Star Island in Miami, Florida. He promised access to uh, record label executives like defendants Lucian Charles Grange and Ethiopia Abdurmarium. Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face. What? And inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother, Janice Combs, if he must, in order to get what he wants. So he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because didn't uh, Gene Deal, the former bodyguard of Diddy, he said, yeah, Diddy was very disrespectful to his mother. And Gene Deal had to check him. Had to check him. So yeah, let's keep going. Mr. Combs and J. Combs solicits drugs and engages in illicit sex acts with minors and sex workers. On or about on or about July second, twenty twenty-three, in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party. See a listening party. That's like in quotation. That means it's something else, really, at his home. Present at this party was a R&B artist, redacted, J. Combs, sex workers, and some underage girls. <sighs> the event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and required Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, several sex workers appeared. In addition to sex workers, there were at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16. You hear this? Of course. <sighs> Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink Lace De Leon liquor. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs laced the liquor with ecstasy. Mr. Combs did not check the identification of any of these underage girls, the presence of these underage women made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable, as should be. Yeah, it should be uncomfortable. He attempted to leave, and Mr. Combs forced him to stay. 
Mr. Combs went so far as to take Mr. Jones' car keys to prevent him from leaving. After being forced to drink laced Delion, Miss、uh, Delion shots, Mr. Jones began feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out and waking up at 4 a.m. the following morning, naked, with a sex a sex worker sleeping next to him. Screenshots of a video from the night is embedded below. Wow. I guess they removed it. They redacted it. Okay, so here's another clue to the number the 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 R and B that the R and B singer that that was at the listening party, the so-called listening party, right? He is a Grammy award-winning R and B singer who had trouble with law enforcement enforcement after assaulting a baby. Oh, that's the same one on the the um the previous. Oh wow, a Bayesian billionaire. Okay, that's the same clue. Clues. Okay, this writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Wow, he has the. He has the the video. Okay. So here goes the, Mr. Combs with an underage female right here. Oh yeah, that is a video. Oh wow, and、uh, here, here, sex worker is here. Wow. Justin Combs, Justin Combs with an underage female. Wow. Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs was grooming him. To pass him off to his friend, of course. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left them alone in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Wow.、Uh, oops, I think I was hard on. There we go. Mr. Combs and Cuba Gooding Jr. moments before Mr. Jones is assaulted. So this is Puffy right here, Diddy and Cuba. Okay. As evidenced by a video of which screenshots are embedded below, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs, near his bone, the small of his back, near his buttocks, and his shoulders. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The following is a screenshot of the encounter with Cuba Gooding Jr. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Yep, he has video of that. So this is the the proof. See, Cuba Gooding Jr. forcibly touching Mr. Jones on Mr. Combs' yacht. Look at this. Look at this. He had his arm around him, and he's leaning in. Look at the other hand. It's like.、Mm, okay. The love album. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was under an implied work-for-hire agreement. He was not compensated for his time living with Mr. Combs or for the songs he produced. As evidence, he was listed as a producer for the following songs on the Love album final release: "Deliver Me," "State," "Part One," "Reaching," "What's Love," "Stay a While," "Moments," "Need Somebody," "Homecoming," "Homecoming," sorry, and "Tough Love." 
Okay. Look at this. Okay, these are about the. Okay, about the album. Mr. Combs' deceptive business practices became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no choice other than to make a public plea on social media for Mr. Combs to pay him for his work. After publicly requesting that Mr. Combs do the right thing and pay him fairly, Mr. Jones received an onslaught of threatening messages from Stevie J and Love Records A&R DeForest Taylor. And here's a screenshot of the text. This is DeForest. Oh, heck. Oh, heck no. Like, you playing. And then, uh, um, Mr. Jones says, I'm in the studio. And then DeForest said, LOL, you 100% layer. I guess he meant liar. And weirdo, weirdo. <laughs> I guess he meant weirdo. Yeah, this is who, this is who was working for Puffy, Diddy. Wow. Good luck. Number still saying, run into N word. Come talk to me in public on a public podcast and forum. What? I guess. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. According to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs is very forceful and demanding. Oh, yeah. Mr. Combs does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Mr. Jones if Mr. Jones did not comply with his demands. As detailed above, Mr. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones' face. These people are into cap. Uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, I forgot to what I was about to say. Oh my goodness, it's not supposed to see. I can't, I just had the word in my mouth. And I just can't, I can't think of it now. Cut, cut. Cannibalism. Yes, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. These people are crazy. These people are sick. Um... As the a of Love Records, DeForest Taylor did not require Mr. Jones or any of the other creatives, musicians, or artists to sign an NDA. On another occasion, on another occasion, on another occasion, occasion, okay, what's wrong with me right now? While standing in Mr. Combs' bedroom. Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in a nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. Yeah, we knew that. We knew that uh, Shine took the he took he he took he took the fall. He did. He did. So, Diddy's former bodyguard accuses the rapper of snitching on Shine over 1999 shootings. So, he even mentioned Jean Deal <laughs> in this lawsuit. Oh, man, this is, this is a lot. This is big. He shared that the artist, he shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, a.k.a. J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. Wow. Yeah, well, she's Jenny from the block, right? I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, we all know she was a hood girl. You know, she was a hood girl. Born in the Bronx, raised in the Bronx, and everything from the Bronx. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that she, you know... Now she wants to be Hollywood and act like, but please. When she was Fly Girl, remember Fly Girl? The, um, the Wayans, the Wayans, the Wayans, the Wayans, the Wayans, oh, what are their names? Their names are, wait, 
what's his name? The Wayans, yeah, I think that's the name. Yeah, the Wayans brothers. The Wayans brothers, yeah. Yeah, they put her out there. This is J Lo. J Ho, they call her J Ho. Yeah, even Jamie Foxx call her J Ho because she. Anyways, let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. So this is the night when they both got arrested. They were arrested. Puffy, Diddy, and Jennifer Lopez. J Lo. You see, she don't even look the same. That's when she had. Well, she had a few nose jobs already. Alright, anyway, not important, right? Um, the shooting in Charlize Recording Studios confirmed Mr. Combs' statements. These statements reinforced Mr. Jones' fear of Mr. Combs and strengthened Mr. Combs' dominion, dominion and control of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones was terrified of Mr. Combs. He felt like he could not tell him no. Yeah, it's like everybody says that. Mr. Combs consistently consistently made it clear that he has in immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Mm, yeah, yeah, because he paid him off. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Mm. This is him, Fahim Muhammad. Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Wow. Upon information and belief, Mr. Muhammad spoke with the LAPD after G, after G was shot at CRS, the LAPD was in CRS and witnessed the blood in the restroom, and they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside of the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connection with law enforcement. Man, these people, they need to go down, all of them. Mr. Jones had no reason to disbelief. Mr. Combs, as he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G and the subsequent silence of the LAPD and the, the media, that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting of G, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom and Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. This guy is a criminal, man. Like, oh, man. This guy is a criminal. Defendants Ethiopia Habito Miriam, Lucian Charles Cringe, Motown Records, Love Records, Universal Music Group, aided, group aided, abetted, and profited off of Sean Combs Rico Enterprise. Oh my gosh, I told you in the other video, I said, well, I've always known this, right? These record labels are a cover, are a front to something more sinister. Okay, these people are running freaking crimes, okay? They selling drugs, okay? And they get away because they're rich and they're getting their private planes, private jets. So therefore, they get away with these things and they... They pay off people too. And then guess what? The police department are in on it. The you know, they and they down with them too. They they push they're helping push those those things. You know? So man, this is crazy. This is crazy. Wow. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Grange visited visits visited Mr. Combs at his home. 
at his homes. It would be in the evening. And he and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. <laughs> what? So him and Grinch, Lucian. Lucian Grinch. I love this. This is how he... Wait, let me scroll up. Where's Lucian again? Where's Lucian? We need the... Wow. I'm not surprised. I just was not expecting him to say that. But yeah, we know. Yeah, his his sponsors, he sleeps with them. He, 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 uh, he, they are his lovers. That's why he's able to be on top like this. Well, guess what? Things are crumbling down now. Wow! 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 Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me go back up. Let's read this again. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defending Grinch visited Mr. Combs at his homes, it would be in the evening, and he and Mr. Combs would disappear. Here for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom, defending Grinch sponsored. You see, it's always his sponsors. Just like the the sponsor, the guy was his name. He owns everything, pretty much. His name, his last name starts with a B, I believe. He's like a billionaire, and he he sponsored uh, Sean John. His clothing line. Yeah, so... Yeah, so Puffy sleeps with everyone. 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 Men, women. You name it. Cats, dogs. <laughs> you name it. Jeez. Everyone. Everything he sleeps. Just like with everything. Everybody. This guy is just... My goodness. Okay. Defendant Cringe. Grinch. Sponsored and attended several love album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home in Los Angeles, California. These parties were sponsored by defendant Mr. L. R. and U. M. G. As evidence above, these parties had sex workers oh, and underage girls present. Of course. Of course, this was what. Oh. Okay, let me calm down. During these parties, defendant Grinch knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was drugging the attendees through late bottles of De Leon tequila and Ciroc vodka. <sighs> it is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated. For females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself. This fact was detailed by former artists and bodyguards of Mr. Combs. As a sponsor of these events, Defendant Grange had a duty and obligation to ensure that sex workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spank spiking. The alcohol with date rape drugs. On YouTube channel, The Art of Dialogue, former bodyguard Gene Deal exposed Mr. Combs' pill mixing method used to spike cranberry juice and orange juice. According to Mr. Deal, Mr. Combs would place ecstasy in other date drugs and the juices. On YouTube, The Art of Dialogue, former artist Mark Curry exposed Mr. Combs spiking bottles of Moet champagne in the VIP section of nightclubs. Mr. Combs would have a set of Moet champagne bottles for his artists and a set for women. And I believe that, of course. Of course, I believe that. I believe it. And then there's some other uh, evidence um, I can click on. Um... Um, had to be removed from TikTok. So he has other 
evidence that people, I guess, had on TikToks. Okay. Let's move on. This writer has spoken with several former employees of Mr. Combs who witnessed defendant Corrin instruct her staff to lace champagne, de Leon, and Ciroc liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs. Mr. Jones recalls seeing defendant Habitarium visiting Mr. Combs' home in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Habitarium, I guess that's her name, visited Mr. Combs at his home, it would be in the evening, and she and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. So, yeah, so she's this, this, and it's crazy because I said that in my other video yesterday. I said Diddy sleeps with everyone in Hollywood. Like, he wants to sleep with everyone. And he has. He has. Believe me, the people that Diddy slept with, you would be shocked. You would think, like, these pe some people will be too higher up for him. Like, too, like up there no they are not too up there for him like this guy is such a he's such a demon that he's such a a jezebel that he can access anyone i'm talking about big top a-listers okay men white men <laughs> they down with him this like because Oh, I'll get into that another time. Okay, where am I? Okay. So even this person had to marry him. Right? Oh, okay. So wait, wait, wait. Okay, I see. I see what I did. Okay, so Coram is the one that instructs her staff to lace champagne and Ciroc liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs. Okay. So this had to marry him person. Yeah. So this one yeah, so Diddy. So she comes over in Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, Los Angeles in California and yeah, visit visit uh uh Mr. Combs Diddy at his home. It would be in the evening and she and Mr. Combs would disappear for hours. So, also, he's sleeping with her, too. Oh, jeez. According to Mr. Jones, defendant Habter Marion visited Mr. Combs at defendant TRS during Mr. Combs' writing camp. Defendant Habter Marion sponsored and attended several love album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home. In Los Angeles, California, these parties were sponsored by defendant Mr. and Mr. I mean Mr. Mr. What? I mean Mr. Lr and UMG as evidence above. These parties had sex workers and underage, you know, girls. During these parties, defendant Hector Maria knew or should have known that Mr. Combs was drugging the attendees through. Lace bottles of De Leon, tequila, and Ciroc vodka. As a sponsor of these events, defendant Abdul Marion had a duty and obligation to ensure that sex workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol with date rape drugs. Wow. Here we go. Oh, so that's that lady. Okay, because when we saw that picture after uh, Cassie lawsuit and he paid it so fast, he, you know, he put out a picture, of course, because how would they get this picture, right? Um, he put out his picture. So I didn't know who this lady was. I know she worked for him, but now we know this is Christina Coram. Wow. So, yeah, this is the part where, where he said, defendant. Defendant Christina Corum is the guiding Maxwell to Sean Combs, Jeffrey, and 
Wow. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs, he witnessed Mr. Combs display and distribute <coughs> guns from his bedroom closet in Miami, Florida, and Los Angeles, California to questionable individuals dressed in all black. Whoa, oh, you know, black, what, are they, what, CIA, what, if, CIA's and stuff? Isn't that CIA's, that, F, uh, uh, FBI's? Wow. Okay. According to Mr. Jones, during the 13 months, he lived and traveled with Mr. Combs. He witnessed defendant Coram openly order her assistance to keep Mr. Combs high of gummies and pills. Wow. Defendant Coram required all employees from the butler, the chef, to the housekeepers to walk around with a pouch or fanny pack filled with cocaine. GHB ecstasy marijuana gummies, 100 to 250 milligrams each, and Tushi, a paint drug that is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, this is a. This is not a record label. This is a. Oh my gosh. It was important to defendant Coram to have Mr. Combs' drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. Defendant Coram ordered sex workers and prostitutes for Mr. Combs. Defendant Coram ordered and distributed ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms to Mr. Combs and his celebrity guests who were present on his rented yacht and in his homes in LA, NYC, and Miami. On multiple occasions, defendant Corum forced Mr. Jones to carry Mr. Combs' drug pouch against his will. As the chief of staff, defendant Corum was instrumental in organizing and executing the RICO enterprise. Defendant Corum had the following individuals Ex execute the following task for the RICO enterprise. Whoa! <laughs> Stevie J recruits sex workers and attends and participates in freak offs. Of course, Justin Combs solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers would engage in freak offs. Oh my gosh! He even had his son. Be doing these things. Brendan Paul worked as Mr. Combs' mule. He requires and, pro and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and guns. Oh. Oh, okay. So we have a recording of this and we'll provide it to the court. So there's evidence. We have a video of Mr. Combs, DBJ, and Plaintiff Jones. At a strip club, Mr. Combs is recording the video while coaching and training Plaintiff Jones how to recruit the sex workers. Oh my god. Wow. Brandon Paul. So this is Brandon. This is Brandon. Frankie Santella works alongside Brandon while Brandon acquires and distributes Mr. Combs' drugs and gun. Frankie carries the money and pays for the guns and drugs. So this is Frankie, Santella, and Sean Combs. Moy Bond hires sex workers and attends and part participates in free offs Wow. Wow. Okay. Moy Bound Born is given 2022 
when Mr. Combs offered Mr. Jones cocaine. Mr. Combs funded and used his affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders who would frequent his homes in L.A. and Miami to secure the drugs and guns he obtained and distributed out of his home in L.A. and Miami. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of violence, threatening to eat plaintiff's face, displaying and distributing guns in plaintiff's presence, bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors in the criminal case concerning the 1999 NYC nightclub shooting which shined. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, parading powerful music industry executives such as defendants Lucian Charles Grange, Ethiopia Hector Mariam at his party filled with sex workers, minors, and illegal drugs such as ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. Defendants executed their RICO enterprise with threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments to $150,000, producers, producer of the year Grammy Awards, and guaranteed access to future projects in a $20 million home on Star Island in Miami. Plaintiff has intentionally left the names and images of these individuals out of the pleading out of fear of retaliation. <clears throat> Mr. Combs is allowed to wreak havoc. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes. Oh, I said it. I said it yesterday. I said this guy just oh my goodness. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants Lucian Charles Grange, of course, Ethiopia Hector Marion, as well as other celebrities, music labels, executives, politicians, and athletes, of course. This is how they're not, that's why they're not going to talk. He has these things over them. He has these things over their heads. He has these videos, these things that they've done with him and for him. So they're not going to rat, they're not going to rat him out. Okay, upon information and belief, these individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent, and as is the case with the homosexual sex tape of Stevie J that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak off party, freak off parties, and his house parties. Of course, upon information. And believe due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and is untouchable. That's true. I see it. Yeah, he really thinks he's untouchable. He thinks he's God, actually. He thinks he's God, I'm telling you. I'm sure there's a tape somewhere where he's like, he's calling himself God. Or he's saying, I'm God. He's dead. Man, okay. <laughs> Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs employs Jose Cruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs who confirmed that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all Mr. Combs' recordings. Upon information and belief, Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera and from social media and the internet due to all the incriminating acts he was required to record for Mr. Combs.
Jose Puffs Tech Guy Kelly. Well, first course of action conduct and participate in a RICO enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity, violation of racketeering influence, and corrupt organization act codified at 18 USD. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Okay, I'm trying to see if I need to read these. Yeah, this is a lot. Wow. Def oh, here's one. Defendants have unlawfully increased their profits by lowering and deceiving producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists such as printed to, trans to transport drugs, ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushroom, transport firearms, solicit minors, exotic dancers, sex workers, and to util utilize, utilize, utilize their talents and labor to produce music and other tangible goods and service without compensation. The RICO Enterprise, which all defendants have engaged in. My goodness. Okay. Wow, this is a lot. This is a lot. Oh my goodness, this is a lot. What? Let me see. Oh my god, this is a lot. Yeah, so this is like you just repeating this part. Wait. Yeah, so he's just named, so naming these people and the, all the promises and all the stuff and what they do, what they've done. To break the law. Thirteen months of non payment. Thirteen months of non payment. That's not cool. Thirteen months of non payment is not cool. It's not cool. Yeah, there's a lot. Look. We're only on page 39, and right now I'm scrolling. Yeah, I'm just scrolling through. Yeah, so he's just naming them all over again, you know, and um, mentioning. Let me see. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a lot. Racketeering. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. Puffy, yeah, Puffy, your time is up, your time is up, your time is up, your time is up, wow, wait, whoa, as described above, this becomes frightened, frightening, Frightened, frightened, sorry, and place plaintiff in apprehension of harm when he physically and sexually assaulted him from October 22 to October 23 in Mr. Combs' home in Miami, New York, United States, Virgin Islands, and Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Mr. Combs possibly touched and attempted and or threatened to touch plaintiff's intimate areas or touch plaintiff with his own intimate body parts. Mr. Combs violently 
gripped and pawed Mr. Jones' anus. What? And crouched without consent. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom and watch Mr. Combs as he showered. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work in the studio while Mr. Combs stripped naked to get his body massaged. Mr. Combs forced Mr. Jones to work while Mr. Combs walked around naked. As a result, out of Mr. Combs' conduct, plaintiff has suffered and continues to suffer harm, including physical injury, severe emotional distress, humiliation, anxiety, and other consequential damages for which he is entitled to an award of Monitor, 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 I can't say this word. Monitor, I, it's like I know it, but right now I'm just like, it's coming to me. <laughs> like I know the word, but sometimes I don't understand why I'm having a hard time with this word. Anyways, let's move on, okay. Um, my, my, not monetary. I almost got it. Mon- monetary. Monetary. There we go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, I'm so gone right now. I'm sorry. Uh, damages and other relief. The conduct of Mr. Combs described above as willful, wanton, malicious, and all relevant times. Mr. Combs acted. With conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of, acted with the knowledge of, or with reckless disregard for the fact that his conduct was certain to cause injury, or and or humiliation to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury. Third cause of action: California's bystanders. Negligent infliction of emotional distress. Okay. Okay, so they're just running everything over, you know, being specific. Um, whoa. Mr. Combs and J. Combs' intentional deception caused a delay, and G. receiving immediate medical care as the ambulance parked three blocks away from CRS out of fear that there was an active shooting. Mr. Jones had to run down the block and convince them that the shooting has, I mean, the shooting had ended. These events traumatized Mr. Jones. It caused Mr. Jones to suffer from insomnia, PTSD, severe anxiety, and depression. Additionally, the fear and silence from the remaining witnesses aided in the reinforcement of Mr. Combs' statements that he is untouchable. Oh my goodness. Fourth cause of action. Sexual assault. Yeah, let's see. Okay, now this right here is talking about young Miami's cousin. Wow. Okay, uh. Yeah, this is the same thing. Sixth cause of action. Premises liability for the sexual assault committed by Cuba Gooding Jr. Against Mr. Combs. Mr. Jones. Um, okay. Alright. Seventh cause of action. Trafficking in Victims Protection Act. Against 
Descendants, Sean Combs, Justin Combs, Christina Quorum, and Combs Global. Okay, we read that already. Wow. Okay. Eight cause of action: California premise liability, inadequate or negligent security against defendants. LR, MR, UMG, TRS, and Sean Combs. Okay. Let me see. Oh, okay, so. As a further approximate result of the negligence of defendants granted, has incurred and will continue to incur medical and related expenses in an amount according to proof. Wherefore, plaintiff pray for judgment against defendants and each of them as follows. General damages according to proof for actual medical expenses incurred for future medical expenses according to proof for loss of earning for interest according to law for cause of loss of suit incurred hearing and for such other and further relief as the court may deem just and proper nine case of action um okay so he's naming the same people again in this section Talking about the trafficking and wow, my goodness, my goodness, this is sick. Eleven cause of action: sexual harassment, assault. Sorry, sexual assault. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh my goodness. Fourteen. Yeah. So it's the. Yeah. So it's pretty much. Yeah, you see, it's so uh, naming everyone again and mentioning the you know the situation. Fifteen cause of wow, wow. So this is the end. See, um, yeah. February 26, 2024, in Brooklyn, New York. That's the lawyer, Tyrone A. Blackburn. There we go. Wow, 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 wow. This is sad. This is sad. Wow. Puffy. Yeah, it's Diddy. Diddy is this is this is this is sick. This is bad and I'm not surprised. I I've known about the industry for a very long time. That's why I'm not a fan of anyone. I don't even like the word fan. I could never all right, this yeah. So this is it. This is all the. This is the. The docu, the document. The lawsuit. So yeah. So I'll see you guys. On the next. Video, please like, and subscribe. Thank you. Peace.